and so you were talking about doing something different <clears throat> and so the biggest thing i feel like that was added to the band was the charlie brown christmas tradition that you started and how did that become an every year tradition that people love so much that's all sandy ox you know yeah. that's all sandy ox like if sandy ox doesn't if sandy ox doesn't suggest that to me and i turn it down 49 times and on the 50th time i go okay let's give it a shot like I, it sounds funny because like, you know, I guess you could kind of vibe Charlie Brown and be like, well, you know, I don't know how much musical integrity is there, but between the jazz ambassadorship we got, which was sending us overseas to play for six weeks, uh, even during September 11th, and we played for all those different countries, that and Charlie Brown has really made our career. Really? It really has. Charlie Brown has introduced, and I saw, what was that cat in New York? I was with you, Al, the, the, the IAJ, you remember those? Um, what's his name? Hal Galper. Hal Galper. Oh, yeah. Hal Galper said, you know, don't use traditional jazz venues to play jazz. Yeah. Right? Like, you that book. Yeah, and I bought that book. That's right. Yeah, so he was like, book. start start booking yourself at libraries, arts councils, you know, fellowships, you know, non-jazz traditional room. And right at that time, you know, this whole band is about timing, man. That's why it's funny we're turning 20, because we all met each other at the right time. Sandy came up with the Charlie Brown thing at the right time when I had the ears to hear it. Um, the, the ambassadorship happened at the right time. We all got old together at the right time. It's like the Charlie Brown thing became a thing because Sandy, Sandy Ox made it a thing. Sandy was like, here's a non-jazz room. We don't book jazz here any other time of the year. Here's a non-jazz room. You can have it. And 263 people bought tickets. That was a sellout. 263 people bought that room. And we parlayed that to arts councils all over the state. All over the state. Yeah, I, I remember when, um, when we were presented with the idea, I thought it was the most ridiculous thing yeah. in the world. In fact, I think the first photo shoot that we had, where we had to wear the Charlie Browns, to see it in my face. There's, there's <laughs> a picture of Al. <laughs> there's a picture of Al. <laughs> it's those yellow T-shirts. They were so ugly. I got. We got. You know, I gotta find that and add that to the video. That's great. I was like, I was like an Eddie Murphy Jolie. Like, Half? Like, really? Really? Sorry, really? <laughs> like, Al did the Eddie Murphy Raw thing like half? <laughs> half? <laughs> what? Um but yeah, that just became a thing. Sandy Ox, shout out Sandy Ox. Right, absolutely. She's the absolutely. best best friend of the band. Right. And I think that that kind of, you know, sort of was a springboard to to you know, to us looking at, at, at you know, thinking outside of the box. Yeah. You know, and that's something that, that, that at least I believe is, is has kept us working for, for 20 years. You know, when I talk to people, you know, and, and say, you know, I'm part of this trio and, and, and say, well, we've been together for 20 years. You know, I, I, al I always have to, 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 to tell them, you know, don't get it twisted. Like 20 years, we've really been playing for 20 years like like you know i, I don't mean a gig here right and a gig here and a gig here right you know you know if we're gonna call ourselves a band i mean we've been working working for 20, for 20 years, years which I, I think that um that's we, we that's, might be in the guinness book of world records pretty soon right we, we definitely <laughs> approaching St uh, keith jarrett standards trio territory yeah. And if, if you go, if you if we did a search for uh, current trios, current jazz bands, not even just trios, but bad jazz bands that are uh, working continuously, we might be the only one yeah. for 20 years. Charlotte, like, they got three years on it. Charlotte, yeah. They got three uh, years on us, I think. Okay, we got to take, take him out. Yeah, yeah I, think got, they, I think they got three years on <laughs> We got a whack <laughs> bill. That's <laughs> <laughs> old. <laughs> We got, a, we got a whack bill. We got a whack bill. Maybe we'll call the thing 20 minutes with the Eric Bertrand. I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead, son. I don't know. And 
I mean, as we're seeing right now, the relationship you three have through these 20 years, how has that made your music better and what you guys do just to an, take it to a next level? Um, that's a good question. You're a good journalist. Um, well, but I think it also, the answer speaks for itself. It's really simple. I mean, you, if you're going to play with the same people for that long, it's like if you're living with someone in a house for 20 years, you're going to get to know them very well, whether you want to or not. Right. So you're going to learn the good and the bad and the ugly. And um, but to but as opposed to like, you know, living in a house, I guess you. Yeah. With family, you don't have a choice. Uh, right. And um, so so we have a choice and we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty cool, too, you know, um, but but I'll let you guys answer more uh uh, in depth on that. Oh, that's a good. No, that's a good answer. I mean, yeah, we get to a, share life. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, also it's a lot of trust too, because like when you have a relationship with somebody off the jazz band stage, when you have a relationship off the band, you know that what they you know that their intentions are coming from a place that's for the collective and not the individual. Right. You know, right. so if I try something and it doesn't work, I trust them to go. Um, Okay, we'll either try to figure out a way of making that work, or we'll tell you that it doesn't work and we'll move on. But it's not competitive. You know, like I've been in some groups where, or I'd rather I played with musicians where you're like, I don't know if this person is playing with me or not. Like we're sharing the same stage, but I don't know if they really care what I'm playing or not. Like they just seem to be about themselves. And, you know, this band, we always play for each other. You know, we play to make each other giggle. You know, which is nice. And you kind of talked on it a little bit already, but what led you to go international? I think the ambassadorship was the thing that kind of kicked us off. We went to South America for six weeks back in 2001, back when you weren't even, you were, my, your mother and I would just not even think about having you, but we went for six weeks and then, and then I kind of kept in touch with, uh, you know, some contacts and then we have gone somewhere on a somewhat regular basis like for 20 years like almost every other year we've done something internationally which is an amazing blessing and what would you say is one of your not the favorite but one of your favorite places to play internationally oh Ooh. man that's a hard one man dubai. dubai 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 was great dubai. right yeah. yeah dubai was awesome man but um I mean, yeah, they're, awesome. Awesome. they were all awesome. All of the trips, man. You know, they, they, you know, it's it's like living that dream, right? You know, it's like living that dream. You're seeing the world. Uh, you're playing the music that you love with the people that you love, yeah. and it, it's just. I, and you're getting so treated every like place a was great. Yeah, you know, even, even even the places that weren't so great were were great because because I was with my boys, you know. Right. And with obviously the pandemic, it's hindered a lot of gigs and more opportunities to try and go out and play in person. But what have you been doing to stay relevant throughout the pandemic? We recorded this record. Yeah. Um, we recorded the record twenty, which is. Um, our most ambitious recording to date. Um, 20 songs, 10 songs that we've recorded in another, on other records in the past to kind of celebrate the past, 10 songs to celebrate our future. Um, we were able to break it up really nicely. We, you know, we were concentrating on a, like four or five songs at a time gave us something to look forward to each month we were going to get together um it's been a challenge but it's been less of a challenge because of that momentum that we had recording um the new record that was really nice yeah and kept with, us, oh go ahead sorry no uh, just kept us all focused on music and connected in a difficult yeah. time that's all yeah and I know that you guys have been doing these jam sessions from time to time uh, throughout this pandemic. How do these sessions help you uh, either stay ready for gigs that could come up or just keep you motivated to keep playing? It does all that, I guess. You know, it, it just, you know, like, 
you know, I was watching an interview with uh, one of these UFC fighters. It's like, you know, there's no, nothing prepares you for getting hit in the nose until you have to get hit in the nose. And it's like jazz is a jealous mistress, you know, like you, you have to spend time with that old lady, you know, like I, you know, if you don't spend time with it, it jazz is just too unforgiving to like put it on the shelf and come back to it like in a month or that like you got to do something. You know, I bought some online jazz lessons today <laughs> just because like I have got to like make sure that I keep my chops up because these cats are playing really, really well. They're getting younger and younger. They're better and better. And you know, and you want to stay relevant. You want to be as good as you can possibly be. So, um, you know, you just, you just have to, you know, how do you and I stay in relationship? Well, you're busy doing stuff and I can't find you. And then you sleep until like two or three o'clock in the afternoon. So like <laughs> Friday, I try to, we try to have lunch together. And then sometimes we try to do a podcast together and then I come into your room and mess with you and you kick me out of the room and then you come into my room and I can't you know you, you have to you have to keep working at it you have to just keep working at it